Hey guys, it's a Sunday update. Um, there's the shop, the garage. I, uh, been slowly working on my fence. I had those two panels done. I finished the third panel. And, um, did a little, uh, seating, grass seating, and I'm preparing a spot for a propane tank, which I should have in a couple weeks, in a 500-gallon tank. I've got a couple bales of hay here against the house. There, that's right, right behind the kitchen sink. <clears throat> it helps prevent the uh, freezing in there. This used to be a six foot banquet table, which I added wheelchair wheels to, and these worthless little roller skate wheels, whatever they are. But that's for hanging clothes out in the sun. Um. You're probably wondering about the milling machine. I guess that's primarily what this is about. Uh, very happy with the with the fence. I don't know if previous videos of the backyard show what poor condition this was in. The soil here is all rock, and the concrete pads from the previous fence are so massive. I ended up drilling one inch holes in the four by fours that were embedded in the concrete and ran the structural one inch pipe into those one inch holes and, and just basically strapped the fence to it. With those cheap little straps. But, uh, yeah, just kind of improvising. And down here, we got an interesting little fix here. I get some landscape timbers stacked up and a piece of wire, chain link fence. This is the tree that was threatening to fall on the shop. Um, so... You know, there's a lot of, let me get this mud off of me. Um, haven't done a whole lot on the mill. I feel like I have a lot of mud on my feet. Okay, these lumps of blanket or dogs underneath there. Okay, well the milling head is still sitting on the floor. And what have I done in a week? Um, I have this, uh, size was that it was too large I, my, I drilled a hole too big I, I didn't know I wasn't thinking that hole was uh, is um, three eighths so I uh, I drilled and tapped this one uh, five sixteenths and I'm not going to do anything to this one. I wasn't going to do this one because I thought, you know what? If one wouldn't hold it, three never would. And I'm not even going to be using this function. You know, it, if I do it all, this plate would have to be loosened up. 
and there's really going to be no way to tighten it back up. Uh, I could put some some access holes in the back like I did here and here but unfortunately they don't they don't line up where they're supposed to be but uh, I'm gonna get two studs in here bolts in here lay a ruler across it put an angle gauge on there and get that thing at zero degrees uh, and that'll mount this thing up these two studs which will have me very close but uh next step is to get that up there and get it bolted on um I'm thinking about putting, standing it up on the motor, so putting it up upside down, and attaching it, and then using this to spin it around. And then remove the bolts, crank the quill down onto the table, remove the bolts, pull this back, tighten this plate, and then bring it back out and reconnect the head. And the whole time the head would just be would just be balancing here on the quill. So I would definitely need a helper if I was going to do that. The other way to do it would just uh, be to you know, grip it as low as I can. And still get my the elevation I need because it's a long way to get this plate up on that mounting. Uh, I can obviously raise the knee, you know, quite a bit, and that'll help. Uh, if I can get it close and get it up there and just. Uh, shove some rods in a couple of these holes just to hold it and then start you know threading them and then moving the rods out and threading more but uh yeah the next stage next step is definitely going to be mounting this um i think i have some help going to be available tomorrow if i can get this guy to come over for a couple hours um, gonna do that. Uh, the electric. This is a switch that came with the machine, and um, this is all I have. It's a three-position barrel switch, I guess. Uh, I ordered a new one. It has its own enclosure, and. Um, it will, uh, it will mount to this on this surface, and then this mounts on the, on the head somewhere on the side, probably over here on the, on the left side. So the switch is going to be, you know, up, up in this area here, you know. So the old wiring system I have, so I got to pull, pull that box off. That box was for the, the drive system. Maybe I'll leave that on. I may, I may put that back up. I may hook all that back up. I, I feel like I probably will. Um, but all this is going to come off. 
And this has a 120 volt outlet box on the bottom. It's uh, never worked for me, but it's uh, simple enough to, uh, all I need to use is one natural leg from the three phase and a neutral and a ground. And I can have a, a 120 outlet on the machine. But for right now, we're gonna take all that off. I'll leave that box on over there in case I, so I always have the option of putting the um, table feed back together. Um, but that's it. I, uh, I did talk to the previous owner and I, and I will be able to use the back gear or the low settings. Um, it's just that uh, this plate needs to be loosened up a little bit. Uh, when putting it in back gear and then tightened up and that pressure will keep the um, clutch dogs from slipping because basically uh, there's a gear in here and let's use this gear as an example there's a gear in there and it has some dogs sticking up some little rectangles sticking up and uh, another plate engages on that and lines up on that and that's that drives that gear in low range and kind of an example of how it works here it's something like this system here you see those teeth like that where you know obviously when it when one direction it grabs the other next direction it slips off so it's similar similar to this it's not uh the same shape but it's the same principle that drives the, the back gear. So, uh, I got all the controls figured out. So that's, you know, I could be, I could be running this thing, you know, late Sunday or Monday. You know, as long as, you know, everything goes together. I'm still debating on using uh, whether I'm going to use the collet alignment pin or not. He never uses collet alignment pins in his machines. He removes them first thing. He says they cause more, more tr problems than than the benefits that they it adds. So I'll probably install it and learn the hard way if, if there's a lesson if there's a lesson to be learned. I did spend about twenty-three dollars on a little tiny little tiny set screw, so might as well use it. Okay, pretty exciting times. Have this thing all put together. Very happy with my uh, with my plate. You know, it's got a lot of dings on it, and you know, it's uh, it's going to do its job. So yeah, with all that electric removed back in the back, everything is going to be. Uh, run through this pecker head. I love what they call these pecker heads. 
and I could run a two, I could run a 120 volt circuit out of this box if I wanted to install one. So, change the belts, you loosen this up, and pull the motor forward, and adjust your belts, and then push it back and tighten it up. And that's how that's done. It'd be nice to have. Um, a lever built onto this so you don't have to have a wrench but it ain't gonna be much problem to grab a wrench you know, i don't think i'm gonna be doing that you know i doubt if you're changing the belt positions that often anyway but um craig tate is the one that found this for me found this uh, milling machine and he he was like apologizing you know that he got me into this and uh you know, I'm, you know having so much trouble you know but uh i'm thrilled to death to have it and i'm very happy with the price i paid and uh i told him that's nonsense man i i think the thing is great I'm going to, after we get this thing up and going, I'm going to uh, get the original head, get that uh, cleaned up. So there's always a backup, but I'm being told that this head here is going to have a lot more functionality than the one that came with this machine. So that's it, guys. Just a little Sunday morning update um, imagine some of people have uh, wondering what the hell I'm doing where the hell I've been but you know I'm here doing you know house stuff getting ready for the winter time and uh share the sticker board with you a little bit so you know I look at this and any one of these people you know every one of these stickers represents a person or a group of people sometimes and I don't think there's one of them that wouldn't lend you a hand if you called out if you reached out to them it's an awesome, awesome community of folks. You know, they, we might not have the, the greatest share of, uh, of YouTube viewership or whatever that's called, but man, you talk about a dedicated group of people willing to help each other out. I, I would say that, like I said, there's, there's not a sticker up there that wouldn't lend you a hand if you needed it. Okay, guys, like and subscribe. Tell a buddy, bring a friend. And we'll see you next time.